Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar, the role of blockchain in future integration. Uh, so this is a work we have been doing for some time. Uh, so we we are a company that uh, that were active in integration field for a long time, and this is part of our research into understand the technology and how uh, technology such as blockchain will affect uh, integration. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start with blockchain. I won't talk too much, but I think most of you know enough about blockchain. Uh, I would just say that it's a it's a it's a way to let a uh, group of people and uh, group of artists that do not trust each other uh, to work together and update uh, immutable digital record immutable append only digital record uh, so what happens is that uh, by their operations this uh, from uh, they may be doing something they may be carrying out transaction they may be even editing and document and as a part of that, those uh, activities, uh, decentralized append only mutable digital record would be created. Because it is immutable, that record can be used as proof what happened. So this create a form of uh, uh, form of trust because you could verify and demonstrate what happened uh, so it can be a it can be used to establish trust okay so uh, now we talked about blockchain and let's quickly walk, talk through integration so i'll start with history of integration few words about history of integration uh, to set the state. There was a time that uh, the software system of organizations were mostly being built. These were custom code put together by people inside and they were not sophisticated. But with time, vendors came up with different uh, software packages to handle different functions of organization such as accounting payrolls uh, customer relationship management etc etc but there was a initially most of these uh, organizations would go with the one vendor and vendor will provide you all the tools and vendor would make sure that those tools work together, right? So, for example, um, um, so UHRM and payroll is connected, things like that. But with time, the market even grow beyond that. Uh, the market get more and more segmented, and uh, if you want the best accounting system and best payroll system, you couldn't get it from the one vendor because the vendor specialized in specific functions. What that means is most organizations end up with systems built from different vendors. Now this create the complication of these, these systems need to talk to each other. So, and the cell, we, we call the solution for that problem as integration. Integration makes sure different systems in your organizations work together. But with time, actually, the, that definition evolved because uh, most organizations wanted to talk with other organizations. For example, if you want to travel to uh, uh, 
tra travel from a place that's not in a major hub you would need multiple airlines to issue you tickets often now for that kind of use case to work the because the customer would generally place the uh, do the booking with an one airline and that airline would talk to uh, uh, other airlines to uh, put together the route that means organizations need to talk to each other. So the integration grew to involve not only the making different systems within an organization talk to each other, but the, the, the systems need to also talk to systems outside of the organization. And if you come back to like last five years, this uh, has further grown into include APIs. Many organizations expose their functionalities as APIs. And you might not even install some of the tools. You use them as a cloud through a cloud API. And now the integration uh, in all making systems inside and outside the system as well as APIs work together. So when these systems are different, uh, they use different formats, they use different timing, um, uh, they, they may have certain assumptions, they might need some, uh, some specific uh, login, authentication, authorization, uh, and the integration uh, solves that. A classical integration architecture looked like this. There's a, there's a ESP that sits in the middle and all communications goes through that ESP. And the, that ESP um, transfer, tr transfer different formats to each other, match timing, sometime uh, even do authentication authorization. Uh, so it's a, it's a centralized architecture, but on one place you would handle all the integration. And in last few years, that architecture has evolved to more micro integrations. Uh, now you install systems, also APIs, and instead of running a single uh, ESP, Enterprise Service Bus, to do all the integrations, you would write many uh, micro integrations. They may be some small microservices or uh, using a specific tool uh, that do integrations. Um, so very broadly, you can think of as the integration of the tech, as the technology uh, that connect different parts in your system, in your organization's different systems together and make them work as a single system. Okay, so uh, let's move in. If we, let's come back to blockchain. Um, now, if you look, if you look around, for most of the things we do need trust. For example, if you do, if you buy, even buy something that need the trust that the person you give money to on run with it. Now, if you uh, so now if you look at how the the world works, the, for some smaller transactions, these were done by the reputation of the seller. Uh, the buyers would trust that the seller won't run away because they stand to gain more by operating the business. Uh, but uh, when going to a high level transaction, such as like buying a land, uh, people would go through complicated processes and professions. Uh, for example, uh, the, all the contracts would be written with involvement with of a lawyer. 
so so basically the point is that we have created systems professionals and processes that help us establish trust now those systems are not perfect but they in general works however they are slow and often expensive now blockchain by providing an alternative way to establish trust and to later demonstrate with the if somebody broke the trust blockchain can potentially replace these uh, uh, slow and expensive processes and professionals on the other hand more systems so far work with the implicit trust of a centralized parties but with uh, recent developments in all for example in all in facebook etc uh, people are more and more suspicious of that kind of centralized trust so the blockchain comes at to this place and then the fact that blockchain is immutable in one hand reassure the participants and on the other hand it deters the attackers so so blockchain actually has a potential to redefine trust the potential to redefine trust uh, and uh, improve the efficiency of the our interactions now if you look at history whenever the communication integration and trust has improved it improve efficiencies for example the before the rule of law if the rule of law is not established most people wouldn't um, worry to do things beyond their short term gain because whatever you you might collect can be taken away but the trust is when the trust is established from rule of law people start thinking long term so you would see if you if you look through history you would see that this happen again and again so uh, so likely the blockchain if they uh, so uh, uh, if they can replace um, uh, these trust mechanisms that create trust in more efficient means it could potentially lead to significant efficiencies so when we look at this topic of using blockchain within integration we identified five potential reasons for uh, integration use cases to use blockchain the first is better collaboration for example consider a building and house now building and house is a is a task that's in all many organizations such as from the architects for to uh to the contractors even uh, municipal country means etc uh, so there and also the suppliers so you know if you consider a specific project like that there's a lot of effort and time spent on the that coordination and resolving any misunderstandings but in a blockchain uh, using blockchain potentially that kind of a project may be laid out as a smart contract 
where when one step finishes, it'll uh, it'll for, take the task to the next step. Uh, the smart contract can itself capture the SLAs and the agreements, even any penalties, etc. And uh, so there are other use cases. So for each of these reasons, I would uh, select, I would list other use cases. Uh, and when uh, later I would point to a document that lists 34 blockchain use cases. And each of these are explained in detail there. So I won't explain them in lot of detail here. So the first reason for use blockchain with integrations is better collaboration. The second is to foster trust. Certain organizations naturally face distrust. For example, if you if you consider a company that sells organic food, they naturally fa uh, would face a distrust whether what they deliver is actually organic. And if it is possible for if it is possible to remove that distrust, it might worth this organization a lot of money. For example, right now, some of these organizations would spend significant amount of money to build their image on advertising, et cetera, to try to mimic that trust. Now blockchain can come and replace come and establish that trust by, for example, creating a uh, documented trace of uh, how each item was supplied. With the, the origin and the creator who, the person who build or grow that produce food and would vouch and each step of the way. So uh, I think it's, it's important to notice though the what blockchain would do is to lay out the document trail and it won't actually enforce it. However, that document trail create an uh, create a, uh, enough evidence for somebody to audit or to investigate and that would reduce the uh, potential for fraud significantly. So the second reason to is to improve trust. The third reason is that sometimes the the the, the for organizations the power to do things may be actually harmful for them. For example, if an organization runs a certification authority, they always face a risk because the authorities may ask the, them to. Uh, issue certificates or change the existing certificate. And if it is if it become widely known that happens, that the organization would reduce the trust on them. So such an organization might choose to put such decisions in out of their hands. For example, in a consortium blockchain, where the multiple, more than half of the members has to agree to do such changes. And then basically in those cases, by giving up control, they, they stand up to gain. Another variation of this may be like, uh, organization may want to create a new standard. However, as long as the standard is under the organization's control, not many others would contribute or adopt those standards. When this happens, organizations go to organizations like 
the other places like the W3C, OACs, OACs etc., to create specification standards. But even then, they are often perceived as the vendor's specification. But if the but, but alternatively, an organization can give up the control of the standards to the community by again setting up the processors and putting it in blockchain. So these are very interesting different takes on blockchain. The fourth, the blockchain can clearly very easily could be used to improve the customer experience. For example, Uh, for example, I'll, I'll take a one uh, reasonably well-known example uh, where uh, the basically trying to give control of the uh, health data to individuals. Uh, so let's assume there is app. Uh, there is app. The whenever a, individual would do a, a test or any health, get any health uh, procedure done. All this data, he would uh, get it into his phone, uh, keep it encrypted and keep it there. Uh, maybe they'll encrypt it and upload to the cloud, but uh, basically only they can access it. So when they go into the doctor, going to see a doctor. Uh, assume the doctor would also have the same map. So uh, you would scan the doctor's uh, barcode uh, and you would see his photo, his, uh, uh, his education qualifications, his records, etc. Right. So those can be verified uh using the profile it set up again his account through blockchain i will we'll talk go, go in, get into detail about how to do that in a few minutes uh, then after that after you verified the doctor basically using blockchain you could create a shared key between you and the doctor and share the relevant records with him. And if you run in, like for example, a platform such as Apple, etc., where the operant OS enforces control, you might even put conditions like the old records would be cannot be copied and deleted within a uh, few hours, etc. So, so with blockchain, the use, use cases such as this has been possible and simplified, and it could significantly improve customer experience. So that is the fourth reason to use blockchain. Uh, fifth one is that blockchain by removing middleman and uh, sometimes uh, replacing trust mechanisms uh, could significantly improve uh, their performance, their efficiency. So those are the five reasons uh, we identified for using the blockchain. And then uh, when we look deeply we identified 34 use cases. We do not claim these are the 34 use cases, but they are very representative. They cover different use cases, different scenarios. And uh, we, we could classify all these 34 under these five reasons for using blockchain. Uh, 
Okay, so now if we look at blockchain, in one hand, you have these advantages, these are reason for use blockchain. But on the other hand, there are certain challenges and risks. Let us quickly look at them. The first challenge on scalability and latency is well known. However, there are recent work that's making uh, promising, uh, uh, providing pro promising results. The second concern is the privacy. Uh, all the, the what blockchain provides is pseudo anonymity. However, if uh, using circumstantial evidence, somebody gets the identity, very likely he could trace back all the transactions of that user. So, um, so there's a significant risk of privacy or, or losing privacy. Uh, also, for, uh, the blockchain, because it is immutable, some use cases, um, so there's no way to appeal. Now, for some use cases, it's not a problem. But for example, let's say you are handling ownership of a land. The only the current owner could change the ownership. What that means is if you make a mistake, you can't fix it without that owner complying. Uh, also, uh, blockchain-based systems are very hard to be regulated. We, we often believe that the markets work perfectly, but the, even the well-functioning markets, such as the stock markets, etc., perform that way because there are a lot of uh, role play by the regulators, etc., to keep the markets fair. But in the blockchain, again, the control is in the algorithm. Uh, it may be hard to enforce that kind of regulations. Also, there are uh, risk of how would the governments and the regulators, etc., would res respond to blockchain, which uh, give pause in some use cases. Okay, so um, I said that we identified 34 use cases. Then to understand the feasibility of these use cases, we, we look at how to implement them. And we identified four architecture patterns that can be used to implement uh, these use cases. These, uh, so in next few slides, let's go through each of these architecture patterns and then discuss the feasibility of these patterns. The first one is uh, identity and access management. Uh, this is mainly based on the, um, uh, the W3C specifications, distributed identity, uh, sorry, decentralized identity, uh, and verifiable claims. So Alice, uh, who is a user, who want to establish a digital identity. Uh, what she would do is she would go to the blockchain and records her DID, decentralized ID, a link to her profile and hash of her profile in the blockchain. Now this establish that the user, now we, at this point we don't know who is this user, but this user who has this public private key pair because she would use that to write to blockchain so we know her public key having this did is claiming that her profile is here 
Okay, now, okay, fine. That record is there. We know such a DID is there. We don't know who she is. Now, to establish her identity, she would go to the authority. For example, um, in US, that would be the, uh, the uh, vehicle registration bureau, or in some other place, it may be person identification department. You go there you uh, show evidence who you are and uh, you would demonstrate that you have the public private key pair for that DID that you can do by doing the challenge response protocol with the authority basically authority would use your private public key to encrypt something and you would have decrypt and show him the results. So you show that you have the private key. Now the authority knows that you, because they know you, they have a way to identify you. Uh, authority knows that you has the private key for this DID and the profile, right? So they can uh, issue a verifiable claim. Um, attesting certain properties about you, such as your name, your, uh, your date of birth, etc. Now, if Alice want to be authenticated to somebody, he would give him the DID. The authenticator would look up the blockchain find her profile and within her profile find the verifiable claims and uh, he can go to the the blockchain and verify that these verifiable claims are correct and they are signed by the right authority and then from those verifiable claims they can know who Alice is so this is this is uh, identity and both identity and access management architecture, uh, which can which can replace the existing identity and access management architecture. And if such an architecture is in place, you could talk to a random person and know uh, with his consent and no properties about him now on this specific case the what would be in the public or in the blockchain would only be the hashes not the verifiable claims right so you could see the hash uh, but you could keep your verifiable claims private and only share it selectively when you want to gain access somewhere so this is the first architecture and this uh, actually this is the base architecture that sits everything else sits on top of okay so this is the first one the second pattern so this this is a registry architecture this is a way for many parties to keep a certain kind of a registry uh, this could be some kind of a lookup look mechanism like DNS. This could be uh, the, somebody can use this to uh, create a marketplace, uh, even to track deals, etc. So it, it, there are many different use cases you could use this for, uh, but it's a it's a decentralized uh, registry that's operated by many. Uh, the way to implement this is to uh, the owner of each. Uh, uh, so you, let's say this API, API marketplace. The user who want to publish their APIs into the registry would go and write to the blockchain the the ID, the link to the whatever their story, and hash of the content. And if he 
if you do a change to that, like update, edit, delete, etc., they would record that as operation, right? The operation would be like add, delete, etc. Now, so the many parties could write, the blockchain would have these records. Then a registry client would need to read these records from the blockchain. Now, blockchain don't have a nice way to search for things. So the client would have to retrieve this data and within that build the uh, searchable mechanisms, etc. and respond. However, the client would work as the blockchain as the backend. And user at any point can go to the blockchain and verify the authenticity of the data he's received. So this is the second architecture. So each of these architectures are described in much more detail in our paper, which I'll link to at the end. A third one is that uh, multiple parties want to create have auditable workspace history. Uh, let us say that two organizations are uh, uh, negotiating. So the the discussions and terms and the data they, for example, data they disclose, etc., could be it could be done on a uh, platform which is backed by uh, uh, the blockchain that give you auditable uh, interface. For example, it may be email system where each email you send uh, would be logged into blockchain with your key so that you cannot later deny that you send that message. Uh, for, uh, just here as an example, let's say you are submitting tax and you want a receipt. So when you submit the tax, the tax server would accept the tax and record in blockchain the receipt and hash of the receipt and send you the receipt with the detail uh, to the blockchain. So you could go back to the blockchain and verify that actually the receipt is correct. Also, at later point, the the tax server or the tax authority cannot deny that they issued that receipt. The final architecture is uh, smart contracts and many things. The uh, smart contracts are already well known and supported, so I won't discuss that part. Uh, but I would talk about the second part, what we call manage things. So this is a pattern to manage uh, almost anything. So here, let's say you want to manage the ownership of the car. And so the, here, the manufacturer would add the first record into the blockchain saying that uh, there is this car. Uh, uh, and the, with the first owner. So there is this car, first owner, et cetera. It would be signed by the manufacturer's uh, public key. So you know who it should be. Then only the owner is allowed to change the ownership of the car. Right, so anybody could write to the blockchain, but uh, the the car would what car would do is it will connect it know its, its id it will connect and it will it look for the blockchain records it will find the first record and then find follow up records he it, it would only consider records where the current owner is doing the second right change in the ownership so the car would uh, car would from that decides the owner Right, and go then connect to his profile and get his public key. So if this part is in place, you could buy a car using one transaction, paying with blockchain, and the ownership of the car would change, would be changed by adding a uh, transaction, adding records to the blockchain. 
and when you approach the car, car, car would have seen the change of ownership. And then it would retrieve your public key and it would run a challenge response protocol with you by creating a random number and encrypting it with your public key and asking you to decrypt it. And uh, assuming you have set up your public and private keys in your phone, the car would interact with your phone and automatically unlock after the payment. So this is this main pattern can be used uh, to manage most of the uh, most items. So uh, as we discussed before, the each of these uh, each of these uh, patterns uh, can be um, uh, yes, sorry, using one of these patterns most, most of the 34 use cases we discussed can be implemented. And the, the link, the document link from the technical use cases lists uh, give a sketch of the implementations. So then we looked at each of these patterns in terms of the risks and uh, challenges. And we, uh, we concluded that the IEM and notable history works uh, spaces are already feasible. Uh, the registry marketplace might have challenges with large deployments, but uh, feasible for small deployments. The smart contracts and managed things uh, still have faced some challenges, such as irreversibility, unpredictability, regulatory response, etc. And so, to recap. Uh, so we, we, we found out, we discussed many use cases and we discussed that the trust is the main driver of blockchain. Uh, even the other advantages come from trust. And we identify five motivations for uh, integration users it's to use blockchain. Uh, also, we identified 34 use cases integration related blockchain use cases. Uh, we identify four patterns for implementing these use cases. And we found that two of their patterns are already feasible. Uh, the third one is uh, feasible in limited deployments. Uh, and the final use case uh, need, has some challenges due to irreparability, etc. Uh, just to add a bit more information, uh, this analysis is done using a framework we call ETAC. You could find more information about the framework. It's, it's a way to look at the major technologies within certain contexts and evaluate it. Uh, you could find more information here. Also, the everything we discuss uh, is captured under this paper called Role of Blockchain in Future Integrations. It described this in detail. Uh, please have a look at it, and we would uh, love to hear back if you have any comments or feedback. Uh, finally, if you want to, if you like to be identified to, uh, sorry, if you like to be notified when uh, new research such as this is done, please subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, uh, so this is the uh, end of the webinar. Um, I could take any questions. Uh, please type them into the uh, questions uh, tab. Uh, I'll, I'll be around for a few minutes and answer the questions I can. Uh, so there are no uh, direct questions. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the email address mentioned in the slides. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, have a good day. Bye.